Hi, and welcome to our webinar series. Uh, today we'll be talking about planning analytics, uh, specifically about advanced reporting and predictive analysis. Um, those some of those advanced concepts that are included in the new planning analytics platform uh, that was released by IBM back in November of last year. My name is Brendan Austin. I'm the team lead uh, for the FPM group within I, uh, LPA Software Solutions. Um, and I'll be taking you through the webinar today. Uh, talking a little bit about planning analytics. Planning analytics was uh, actually released in November of 2015. Um, and it's based on three themes. Uh, first, we're gonna talk about speed. Um, IBM released this product and they wanted to create something that had a rapid self-service, um, high end user adoption. Um, so that somebody could just jump in there very quickly and create reports and analyses um, to help drive your business. The second theme is foresight. Um, you know, make it easy. Um, make it, you know, give somebody the ability to go in there and model up scenarios, uh, look at trends, and, and predict basically what the business is going to look like in the future. And lastly, it was agility. So, you know, it had to be business owned. Um, it had to be flexible. So it had to grow with the company. Um, you know, it had to adapt quickly. Uh, to business conditions as, as they changed. Um, planning analytics is a cloud-based solution um, and behind the scenes what you're actually getting is not just uh, if you're familiar with product TM1 which is an OLAP based technology uh, but you're also getting the Cognos Business Intelligence tool set along with that to report off of TM1 cubes um, but also included is the Watson Analytics platform which gives you uh, natural language query capabilities, uh, data discovery, a predictive piece to it. Uh, we'll go in and look at your history and a bunch of different factors and it will actually predict a model for you automatically. And it also comes with planning and analytics workspace. With that, uh, you get a whole lot of collaboration online um, and you also get the mobile capability. So through an iPad, iPhone, Android device, uh, you can actually uh, look at all of these reports, charts, graphs, um, and actually make changes to them on your mobile devices as well. Um, a little bit about the Watson Analytics uh, piece of the software. Um, there is a a free trial to Watson Analytics. If you go out to the IBM website, you can actually sign up for a free trial uh, to Watson. Um, the intent of Watson is that it's very easy to use. Uh, you don't need a, a statistical analysis background to go in and create a predictive model uh, within Watson Analytics. Uh, you can go in and basically ask Watson with natural language questions. Uh, uh, information about your data and it will infer based upon that data and those questions that you answer um, what you actually want to model and it will create that model based off those questions. Um, it will then assemble a dashboard to tell you the story. Um, so it, and we'll go into that in the demo in just a little while. Um, as far as the advanced analysis part of um, planning analytics, um, you know, there's there's foresight uh, built in, um, and this is part of the the Watson uh, piece of planning analytics. Um, the system will automatically generate a forecast for you based upon your historical data. It will tell you how accurate it thinks that forecast is, and what that forecast is is driven off of. So, what factors you may not realize um, is is driving a particular forecast or a prediction. Um, within the tool set you also can do strategy management and, and part of that is um, to do metrics and scorecards uh, which you can create easily in the system. Uh, the system will automatically create those scorecards and update them as often as your data updates in the system. So you can see visually um, at any point in time uh, how you're doing as against your targets um, in, in both visual uh, cues as well as numbers. You can also create goals 
um, within the system too, and the system will track those goals um, against those metrics that you set up, as well as a cause and effect analysis. You can see at the bottom left hand side, um, you know, we can see while why certain components are up or down from target, and it will create that uh, direct cause and effect analysis automatically for you, and you can drill down and see which components are above or below target um, based upon the data that's come in so far. Um, you also have a component with management reporting. It's uh, the business intelligence piece, um, which is self-service and data-driven. Um, you can you know, design these reports uh, to customize them to your business. Um, you can schedule those reports and have them automatically delivered uh, to any of your users as well, either via email uh, or PDF, Excel document, however you decide. Um, or you can just leave them out there as a self-service um, report that they go out to the portal and actually launch those reports on demand. They can drill down on those reports, change those reports up to how they want to see their data. As you can see, there's also very different um, <clears throat> visualization capabilities too, different charts and graphs, etc. Um, those are all user sp sp specific as well. So if a user doesn't particularly like the way a dashboard or report has been set up, they can easily change it, save it under their own user account, and it won't change the master report that's out there. Um, some of the advanced analysis that we're going to be covering today in the demo um, gives you the ability to do some discovery of your data. Um, again, it's with natural language. Um, you can also access external data. So if you've got market data that you want to bring in, uh, if you want to bring in Twitter data, um, there's, an, there's a link to bring in Twitter data, uh, review boards, uh, blogs as well. You import that data in. The system automatically combines that data with the data that you've got already loaded uh, from your financial systems or what have you. Um, and it will create these dashboards and these reports and tell you what the story is about that data. Tell you if there are any correlations in the data um, that, that make sense. Um, a little bit about the mobile um, capabilities because this is a cloud-based solution. Uh, basically, all your mobile users can access the environment uh, basically anytime, anywhere with an internet connection. Um, it's collaborative, so I can create uh, tasks for people um, on a schedule. I can create a conversation about a report. I can send uh, snapshots of reports to other users, uh, etc. And you can all do that from your smartphone, um, your iPad, Android device. Additional benefits of uh, having this, this environment hosted in the cloud. Number one is lower cost of ownership. Um, because it's a cloud-based solution, IBM would actually host and provision the entire uh, software and hardware environment. Um, with the cloud version, you get 64 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, to run the server for uh, with with four cores so that's a lot of horsepower to run uh, your models uh, behind the scenes team uh, IBM uh, the IBM team will actually do all of your upgrades um, and updates uh, for free as part of this hosting uh, faster time to value uh, you know there's no hardware that you need to purchase obviously um, you know Basically, IBM just provisions the environment within a couple days, and you're up and running to start building uh, whatever reports and analysis you want. Um, scalability, you know, it's it's easily uh, accessible for IBM to go in there and add additional um, capabilities or, or space if you need it. Uh, less strain on IT resources this is one less thing that IT needs to handle within your organization. Um, and, and your, your cost, is a, it's a month-to-month -month cost rather than a capitalized cost uh, to procure the equipment and the software. So it's, it's a monthly, monthly fee. Um, for existing TM1 on-premise customers, uh, there is a Bridge to Cloud dual entitlement program that is offered. Um, if you are interested in that, please let us know. Uh, basically, the way it works is 
when you go to renew your software and support for the year, um, IBM will, will give you an offer to upgrade to the cloud-based planning analytics solution, which of course then you get the additional products that are included. Um, basically at the end of that term that you renew for, you have the ability to go back to on-prem uh, and reinstate your, your licenses that you of course still own, um, or you could stay on the cloud. So you have that dual support uh, for both products during that 36 month term, which gives you plenty of time to convert everything up to the cloud as well. Uh, one big question that we get from people that are looking at this cloud-based solution, um, there, there is the capabilities to load data now directly from your on-prem systems. So if you have an on-prem, uh, say, ERP system such as Great Plains, uh, Blossom, etc., um, you can actually, there's a connector now uh, that will actually let you load that data directly from your on-prem system to the cloud um, and back. So I can, after I've loaded the data and I want to drill back from the cloud back to my on-prem systems, I can do that as well. So with that connector, that's now possible. All right, so on to the demo. I uh, wanted to set the stage a little bit for the data that we're going to be looking at today. Um, we created this company called SmartCo Incorporated. Um, it is a fictitious company uh, that manufactures and produces consumer electronic devices, specifically cell phones and computers. Um, the company had $98 million in sales in 2014. Uh, they dropped to $76 million in 15. And uh, the initial uh, pass at the forecast and budget for 16 is showing only a $79 million. Uh, sales base. Um, the CEO and the CFO have gotten together and they know that there's a there's actually an, an increase in demand in the marketplace um, for their products and they're concerned with why the company is only you know projecting a 79 million dollar sales for 16. It should be higher uh, than that. Um, so the CFO is is concerned about using their existing Excel reports that they've got to do their analysis and their forecasting and budgeting and want some real-time information and a system to kind of go behind that. Okay. So first off, we're going to look at their existing Excel report, which is probably very familiar uh, to a lot of you. Uh, this is, you know, the, you know, call it Excel hell. You've got these master Excel spreadsheets that have multiple tabs across the bottom where they're summarizing different locations, different call centers, etc. As that data is updated on a monthly basis, somebody's got actually going to open up those spreadsheets, update the numbers, redo all the calculations. If there's a mistake, people have reported off the wrong numbers. Uh, God forbid the, the Excel file get corrupted or gets too big. Um, or you need to reorganize something. So this is kind of uh, just an example of a typical um, type of Excel report that you know a company may be using right now to do their forecasting, budgeting, financial reporting, analysis, what have you. Um, so basically, this is the point that we started with, um, and, and this company has now implemented planning analytics, and we're going to show that to you. Basically, the first step that they, we did, and these are the two areas that we're going to be concentrating on today in the demo. Uh, first is, is the revenue kind of data set. And that revenue data set was um, split up into uh, these, these boxes that sit around revenue or the dimensions, the dimensionality of revenue data. Um, so we wanted to look at the data by year, by month, by version, by organization, channel, uh, which means, you know, whether it comes in from the internet, retail, distribution, etc., and then by product, okay? And that revenue data at the detailed product level feeds directly into my income statement on the revenue line, okay? So my, in my income statement, I've got um, my data by account, by version, so actual budget forecast, etc. Uh, month, year, by currency. This company also does uh, uh, business in Canada as well, so they need to do in multiple currency, and then finally by organization. 
So with that, we're going to jump over to the demo uh, environment planning analytics. Okay, starting out on the planning analytics uh, platform, um, when you log in, uh, this is the workspace that you see. Um, the first thing that you see up the top is uh, the welcome screen, and I can jump back and forth between different uh, environments that I set up. Um, you hear I've got SmartCo open, um, and I can jump back and forth between it. Um, to the right hand side, it tells me who I'm logged in as. Um, over on the very right hand side, I can see the, the tasks and processes that are assigned to me uh, within the environment along with the calendar um, and I can open up these tasks and add additional notes to it, um, additional people um, or any information that I want to on that, that task. Um, I can also uh, contribute to a conversation or start up a new conversation uh, directly on this screen too. So if I start up a conversation and direct that conversation at particular users that will get notified um, to contribute to that conversation. Um, down on the 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 kind of the, the next line down are the different areas that I can go into uh, within the planning analytics platform. Um, so this is my, my workspace, uh, if you will, uh, with my workbooks that I've created uh, for different users or for different um, parts of the business. And I can uh, either share these books with everyone or particular users or particular groups uh, within the model. Um, today we're going to be working with the SmartCo uh, Planning Analytics book. Um, but you can also go to the report uh, section, which is the Cognitive Business Intelligence piece of planning analytics, where you can go and look at um, specific dashboards or reports that you want to either uh, just, just run or send out automatically to users. And then the explore and predict section is, is the Watson piece of it, which we'll go into a little bit later as well. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, and launch the Planning Analytics uh, SmartCo workbook. Um, and we'll go over a couple of these tabs real quickly uh, to show you guys uh, just some of the information or uh, types of analysis that you can do with Planning Analytics. Uh, the first tab um, that we've got on here is the score scorecards and metrics tab. Um, these tabs, you can add as many tabs as you want to. Um, I can rename them. I can add whatever components I want to to them. What you see here is not necessarily what you have to uh, deploy in your environment. It's completely customizable uh, to how you want to, um, you know, present the data to your users. Um, but in this case, we've got a sales scorecard up top. And what we're showing, basically, just uh, some high-level KPIs of you know gross revenue and high-level expenses for the organization, um, actual versus budget. Um, and we've done a scorecard uh, that is dependent upon whether they're above or below budget, um, and what that threshold above or below budget indicates, whether it's a red, green, or yellow um, traffic light. And over, over the right hand side, it says how it's trending. So if we're poor and it's still trending poor, it's you're going to get a downward downward arrow. Arrow. Um, if it's you know above target and still getting better, you'll get an upward arrow as well. Um, here, you know, when I look at the current uh, period uh, forecast to budget, the trend is flat. So uh, you know, our budget has not changed over time. Our forecast has. Um, so as we've gone throughout the year, our forecast is uh, either getting worse or better than what we had budgeted. Okay. Um, the lower left-hand side shows some cause and effect analysis. Um, so here, you know, uh, the overall goal of the company is to make the most net profit, right? Companies are in business typically to make money. Um, and so net profit is a goal uh, of the company. When I arrow over that, I can see the box is red. Uh, that indicates that you know the status is poor. Um, the status is poor according to what I have opted as a target um, for my company and for that account. So here I can see that my budget uh, for the period is $31 million. My actuals are only $18 million. 
have a variance of almost 13 million and that's 41 percent variance and I can see that um, you know there's some cause and effect um, resulting from that net profit I can say okay why is my net profit low well I can see that my total operating expenses are also low they're poor and if I arrow over that I can see them 1.9 percent off on total operating not a huge deal um, but I can go down to gross margin and I can say wow that's where the bulk of my my uh, numbers that are off are so I can actually expand that out and start looking at my gross margin and the components of gross margin to see why I'm off and I can very quickly see that my cost of sales I'm actually doing better than my budget um, but it's my my gross revenue and when I drill upon, down upon that it's actually my gross sales that are down um, as compared to budget so I, I could do the same thing if I wanted to look at my operating expenses and see you know okay well wow I'm doing well on the rest of my operating expenses it's my payroll uh, information so I can expand that out and I can see that within payroll it's really across the board my salaries are too high my benefits are too high etc so it it allows the user at any level to drill down and see what the cause and effect of you know numbers are within the system okay um, over on the right hand side is a goal sheet that we've created um, so ultimately we created goals at different tiers um, so we've got the 2015 plan goals um, uh, and those are comprised of increasing shareholder value um, the share buyback program as well as increasing earnings per share uh, profitability target as well and with the profitability target comes revenue um, gross margin and reduce expense targets um, behind the scenes we've assigned some numbers and some variances to each one of these uh, targets or goals um, and the system's automatically updating your progress against those goals and it's telling you which targets you're meeting um, and, and basically giving you a scorecard on how your business is operating right now so I can see that my share buyback program I'm doing actually doing very well as far as report card goes um, but my grow revenue obviously I'm, I'm having some issues I'm not hitting any of those targets right now um, so I'm actually those two both of those targets that are part of that grow revenue um, are, are red as well so it gives you a visual cue kind of how you're doing um, I can then go from here and then start drilling down um, on that additional information and, and see the detail okay um, I have the ability also to create different types of tabs and reports um, if we jump over to this revenue analysis it's just a, di a little bit different view of a specific revenue data um, so here I'm looking at revenue by product budget versus actual for a particular month I can change that month uh, by simply clicking on the, the month and changing that. I can come down uh, below and I can see, okay, maybe I want to look at the, the data uh, by channel. So I'm going to come to retail now. You want to look at retail or internet. Um, it, it's going to change up all the data um, automatically based upon what I'm selecting. The charts are going to change automatically as I make selections within the system. Um, so you will see them actually change, um, which, which is a, it's a new component of this, the software. Also down below, I can create these play buttons, which will cycle through um, sections of the data. So if I want to slice my information up by region, and I want to change all the charts and graphs on the page by region, I can put the selector bar down at the bottom. It comes with a play button, which will then cycle through each. Um, so people can see the differences between those they can hit stop or play when they want to etc um, within this model and we've gone through it in a, a different webinar but we, we've got several different types of analyses that we're doing uh, basically ultimately to do the forecast and the budget um, what I want to take you to now though is the social media tab so on my social anal media tab um, I've got information um, from a couple different sources actually um, up top I've got some information that I've comprised from my 
uh, FP&A group um, as well as my sales group has, has compiled um, some budget numbers uh, by product by organization uh, for the year. Um, and I'm also bringing in my actuals from my ERP system. So as sales are actually um, booked, they actually come in uh, automatically into the system. So I, I'm uh, calculating a variance uh, between actual and budget by product by organization. So up here I can see that I'm uh, looking at my phone's uh, products um, and I can actually change that um, by selecting uh, uh, this box up here. I can look at maybe all my total products. Um, so these are all the products within my catalog um, or I can hone in on a particular product or type of product as well. Um, I could also change the year, um, you know, look at a different version, whether I want to look at forecast versus actual or budget versus actual. Um, here I'm looking at gross margin, but I can change that too. So I can look at, you know, the number of units I'm selling, gross margin percentage, etc. cetera. Um, and here I've got all my uh, organizations that I'm looking at too. So I can look at my individual states rolled up by region uh, versus the total company and I can expand and collapse those as well as if I want to. Um, down below I've got some additional information that's coming from uh, social media import. Um, so let's say we're in particular we're looking at uh, data on a specific product um, and I want to hone in and look at my uh, information on in particular a phone um, that that marketing is asking me about um, and I can drill down and it's a 4G 32 gig phone. Now I'm going to go ahead and select that 4G 32 gigabyte phone so I can see that um, you know I budgeted 3.9 million dollars um, gross margin um, for that phone. I'm only seeing so far this year 2.44 million um, so obviously I'm, I'm way below budget. I want to see you know what is being said about this particular phone out there? You know, is there something wrong with this phone? Is something that we need to address? Why are sales so low? Um, when I made that selection up here, and scroll down to the bottom, um, this data automatically synced to what I picked up above. So as I change the products up above, it's going to change uh, the pull down below. And so this is saying that in the time frame that I, you know, had had put out there. Um, this went out to Twitter um, and it actually did an analysis using the Watson um, analytics piece of the software and it did a query off this 4 gigabyte 32 gig 4, 4G 32 gigabyte phone that we're producing um, and it brought back all of the comments that it found on Twitter based off the query that I made. Okay, so I can see that you know there's there's some negative comments out there, um, you know, and and there may be some information in here that I could go back to our engineering group um, with and give them some some information. Um, here they're saying it's too expensive uh, for you know as fast as the CPU is. Um, there's some people that like it, um, but they're, again they're saying it's pricey. So maybe it's a, a marketing strategy. Um, we need to look at possibly reducing our expenses on this particular phone so that we can reduce the, the, the price to our customers. Or maybe we need to uh, offer some incentives um, or some additional marketing, etc. If I go up here and I, ch I change now, maybe I want to look at the 3G equivalent to that phone and see what um, you know its information is out there. So I want to look at the 16 gigabyte 3G phone. Um, I'm going to change it up top. So now I can see, you know, it's really negative. Um, you know, it's in fact black. You know, they still build and sell these. Why are we marketing this thing? Um, but if I scroll up to the top, I can see that, you know, we're actually doing fairly, fairly well. Um, you know, it, our variance is not quite as bad as with the 4G version of this phone. Um, so we still are selling quite a bit. But overall, people in the marketplace um, don't have a very good view or outlook on this particular phone. So this this allows you to bring data from different uh, avenues directly in this platform 
um, and consolidate it and link that together. Um, so here we're looking at data that came from a plan um, that was outside of our ERP system, as well as our ERP system um, that's bringing the actuals, as well as this Twitter data um, that's, that's linking it all together based upon that product information. Okay, so now we're going to uh, go over to our predictive model. Um, so basically, uh, right now, the, the management team of the company wants to know, um, based upon certain factors, uh, what the market's going to do, specifically what the revenue targets are by product um, and, and as a whole over the next year. So I'm going to go over to this predictive model um, tab. Um, up at the top of this, we, we've created some uh, external factors um, that we're tracking that we think could potentially influence how our customers are going to buy our products. Um, first off is, is business days. So the number of business days in the month that we can actually sell those products obviously impacts um, you know, our sales for the month. Uh, our consumer spending index. So we can see over time, um, over the last year, a year and a half, um, what that index has been, um, the inflation rate, as well as the unemployment rate. Um, and we're tracking that information over time and we've plotted it um, automatically um, uh, over time so we, we can kind of see how it's trending. Um, I can make changes to those. So let's say, you know, we think the um, inflation rate is, is going to change a little bit um, in 2016. I can actually change that um, as well um, directly in the screen. So let's say if I want to change, um, you know, starting in March, I want to change that, that rate. Um, I simply just can go over here, uh, scroll, make sure I'm on the right line, the inflation. Uh, yes. And we come out to March 2016 and I can simply either key over that number so let's say the inflation rate I think is going to go up to 1.8 um, I can simply key over that number um, and hit enter and when I do it's going to uh, embed it in the model uh, and change it or I can highlight several months as well and I can do what's called the data spread and I can do a change um, to that. So let's say I want to increase this by um, 25% and add 25% to each. Um, the system will automatically adjust what that calculation is um, and move those numbers accordingly. Um, so that, that just adjusted my um, inflation rates. So I can come back here now and look at um, my, my factors over time again. Um, I can change which version I'm in. So I'm in predictive uh, mode one uh, versus predictive mode two. I can create as many of these different versions as I want to. Um, right now we're looking at the month of May um, is, is what we're predicting our, our forecast for. Um, and if you scroll down to the bottom, I've actually got a results tab um, that goes through and it models uh, based upon these factors uh, and what I think is going to happen, um, what my sales are going to be for that period of time. So to do that, um, to run that prediction, all that I do is click on this button. Um, and I can see how the system has modeled or predicted my forecast uh, for units sold by channel for the total company. And I can drill down on the different channels. So if I want to see how, what I think retail is going to do, um, I can change that up. Um, look at by each channel. I could look at each organization individually. Um, basically, I've created an analysis of budget versus actual versus my predictive one scenario versus my predictive two scenario. And I can have different influencing factors to each one of those predictive scenarios. So I can see over time um, how these predictive models uh, kind of play out uh, based upon um, the selections that I've made um, and, and you know the inflation rate as well as the consumer indexes, et cetera. Um, so I can kind of predict over time um, my products. 
I can actually hone in on individual products as well. So just like in the other screens, um, uh, you know, I can look at a particular product. So let's look at um, our 3G uh, 16 gigabyte uh, phones. Um, so I can see over time, um, you know, my sales are kind of dropping off uh, over time for that uh, that particular phone. Um, and then in January 16, uh, they're basically nothing uh, with one of the predictive models. Uh, this is actually our, our actuals that we've seen because we don't have actuals yet for that. Um, but they're still kind of trending down uh, for that particular product. Um, but I could go and look at any one of the products or my you know phones overall, um, kind of see how I'm trending. The scale will change based upon the data. Um, so I have the ability to then send this to an Excel file. Um, I could email this to somebody, create a PDF from it, etc. So now I'm I'm curious, um, you know, based upon the information that I've I've seen in the system so far, I, I want to know maybe how age and gender um, impact the products that I'm selling. You know, I, maybe working with the marketing team, and you know, now we've seen some of the products are kind of tapering off. Uh, maybe we need to change up our marketing efforts. Maybe we need to do a new pricing strategy, etc. Um, and I want to ask the system kind of, you know, some uh, questions about um, uh, age and gender um, with respect to products. Um, but I don't necessarily know where that information is going to come from. So what I can do, um, I can come up here and I can actually add a new tab um, to my, my sheet. And I'm going to just say free form and use. And up at the top of this new tab, I've got a question box. Um, so in that question box, I'm going to actually type in age and gender. Um, and hit enter. What the system is going to do is it's going to go out and look at all my models that I've created out there. And it says, okay, um, this is what I, I can see um, based upon uh, the information that you typed in there. This is what I think you want to look at. Um, so down here we're going to say we're going to use that, that model. Um, so here I've got a data set um, that I've got set up in the system already stretch this out just a little bit, um, where I've looked at um, product sales by gender and by age. And if I click on these three dots over here, I can actually add in um, these additional dimensions so I can slice and dice the data by those as well. So right now I'm looking at, um, you know, I've also got an income level breakdown as well. So I can look at my product uh, by income level, um, looking at all products and all channels and all organizations. Um, let's say I want to look at the breakdown, though, of uh, product by um, by gender. I don't care about age, necessarily. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to move some of these things around real quick. Um, and I'm going to swap out product for age. Um, and you can see very quickly, I'm figuring out my total sales uh, based upon um, that information. So these are my unit sales. Um, male versus female by product. Um, so I can see that, you know, looking at my phones versus computers, I'm selling a whole lot more phones to males than females, um, as well as my computers. And if I start drilling down on those individual products, um, I can see uh, very quickly that my 128 gigabyte 3 3G phone um, selling a lot more to males than females. But my 16 gigabyte phone, that product that we were looking at a little while ago, um, that is, um, you know, kind of behind the times as far as technology, I'm selling a lot more of those to females for some reason. And I can start drilling down on that and figuring out, okay, you know, what, what age females are buying that phone, uh, what income level um, are buying that phone as well. Let's say I want to change this up a little bit more. I want to look at this as, as a, a different visualization. I can come up here to this icon and, and change this from looking at the data uh, to maybe I want to look at a particular type of chart. Um, and I'm going to change this to look at um, a, a word cloud. Um, so what it's going to do, it's going to change all that information into a visual representation of, of the data. So males are in blue, females are in green. 
Um, so it shows me the different types of information. Uh, maybe I want to change this up a little bit more and come back up and change the visualization a little bit more. Look at a heat map. Here it's going to plot all the products, um, you know, based upon the, the color intensity, um, you know, how, how it's selling. So very quickly I'm changing up this data uh, to look at um, the information in a variety of different ways um, so I can hone in maybe look at just particular um, you know age group so if, let's say I want to come in and look at a uh, particular age I want to look at 25 year old males versus females um, it's going to change up the data very quickly and once I've got it on the screen I can then send this to anybody else uh, collaborate on it um, I can take it to Excel uh, create a report off of it I can send it to PDF of course I can print it as well uh, but basically this is my analysis that I've done based upon the data that's already there um, at my fingertips. Okay, so now we're going to go um, do another analysis and I'm going to add another question up here and I want to know the 3G Massachusetts uh, variance explanation. Uh, for January 2015. So I want to know in January 2015 how the 3G products were sold and I want to know the variants um, if there are any variance explanations in there. I can actually come here and I'm going to say okay I want to use this uh, revenue reporting uh, data set. I'm going to click uh, use and it's going to add that as a new chart at the bottom. So the system's automatically figured out for me based upon that question that I put in there, um, what I wanted to include. I'm going to go ahead and click the, the three dots to the right. Um, so it's already filtered it to 2015. Um, it included January in there as well as the other months. But it's honed it into just the 3G products. So I didn't have to go in and create a brand new report. I didn't need to call somebody from IT and say, can you help me do this? Um, so I, I very quickly did this. Um, what I wanted to show here is the system's not only going to track and store numbers associated with a forecast, an actual budget, sales, etc. We'll store text as well. So here I can actually track and type in information about an explanation. Uh, for variance analysis or maybe uh, an explanation on maybe why I'm changing a number etc. So I can come in here and actually say um, you know product is outdated here and when I hit enter that's automatically stored I can go in and change that um, uh, as well so I can I can actually collaborate and store all of that text associated with those numbers as well and share that and report off of that text as well as the numbers associated with those roll-ups um, and, and the data that's coming into the system okay so now we're gonna jump over to the Watson analytics piece um, and we're gonna do some uh, analysis and discovery off of the Twitter information that's coming in about 3G and 4G phones. Okay, so to get to the um, Watson well, Analytics piece, uh, we'll first we go back to the welcome screen. So up at the top we're going to go back to welcome um, and then we're going to go into this explore and predict section. Uh, we'll click on that. It'll actually launch the, the welcome uh, Watson Analytics sign-in go ahead and sign in with my ID. Um, if you want to get a free uh, subscription to Watson Analytics, uh, there's a two-week free trial that you can sign up on the IBM website. Uh, we'll give you access to um, all of this information, including the social media plugin, which we're going to look at today. Um, here, again, I've got different data sets that I've brought in um, from different sources, um, and, and I can explore each one of those data sets. Um, we're going to look in particular at the 3G and 4G phones um, social me media project that I created. Um, when you do import new data into the system, it's going to tell you uh, the quality of that data based upon you know how the data is filled out, um, if there are any correlations in that data, um, you know if the the uh, set is big enough, etc. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and open up this the 3G and 4G phones. Uh, 
data set. Um, to create this data set, all that I did is I created uh, two topics that I wanted um, Watson to go out and search for. Uh, one was 3G and one was 4G. Um, I could add additional topics if I wanted to. If I wanted to add my brand in there, I could. Um, if I wanted to add a theme uh, to those topics, I could as well. I, I left it wide open. Uh, my dates, I just went back um, you know, a period of time over the holidays. I wanted to know kind of what people were saying about the, the products that were out there. If I wanted to, to limit it to specific languages, um, I could do that as well. The sources that I included um, were Twitter, as well as message boards and any reviews that were, were cut out there. And the system automatically created this analysis for me. So when I come to that analysis tab, um, it it's actually goes and it, it re, um, uh, reviews all the information that it brought back. And it tells me the information that it found um, based upon the, the topics that I created. So the, the light blue is the 4G uh, topics. So I can see that you know, there's, there's more uh, Twitter comments on uh, 4G than on 3G. Um, if I scroll down a little bit, um, you can actually see you know, the, the, um, the share uh, based upon uh, that. Um, I can look at you know, the time period that it was done and etc. Um, and I can start drilling down on these different things. So let's say I want to look at the breakdown um, uh, by topic here. I can see the sentiment uh, based upon uh, 3G versus 4G. Um, so we're getting a lot more positive uh, sentiment on the 4G phones and a lot less negative sentiment on the 4G phones. It's kind of reflective of the data and the sales that we're seeing as well, as well as the additional Twitter comments that we brought into our other model. Um, I can scroll down um, and look at uh, you know, the, the breakdown um, by geography, see where these comments are coming from. You know, you can look at you know, obviously a lot of them are coming from the United States. And I'm also getting some from China, Russia, Canada, Brazil, etc. Um, so basically, it gives me a lot of information about um, the people that are commenting about these products. Um, here I'm looking at some of the demographic information, um, male versus female, and I can see just like what we were seeing in our sales data, um, you know, we're getting a lot more comments from males than we are from females on our products. Um, you know, marital status, if we have that information, um, how it's set up, etc. So this gives me a lot of information um, to glean from Twitter uh, based upon any topic that I can key out there um, and key on to. Um, and then I can incorporate that, that information that I'm seeing in Twitter um, along with my predictions and my model uh, for my forecast and my budget. So at this point, um, we're going to go back to our main Watson page. Um, and based upon this information that we brought in from Twitter, we want to predict um, and find out what, what the correlations um, in the data is um, based upon the information that we brought in. So we're going to go back to the welcome screen. And I created, um, you know, before we started this webinar, a prediction uh, based upon some information. Um, so I can come down here to the prediction uh, by gender. So I, I did the sales by gender. I'm, I'm particularly interested in knowing which products uh, we're going to sell to which gender and maybe um, some of the marketing um, changes that we can make. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up. Um, and I can see at the top, I can see that I've, I've created one target. Um, and that target um, is I'm trying to predict the, the products that we're selling uh, by gender. I can see uh, the data quality um, is excellent um, with the data that I brought in. So it's gone through and it's it's analyzed all the different factors that I brought in and said, you know, what's populated versus what's what's not. It's telling me um, which, which the inputs, so the inputs are down here based upon the information that I brought in. Um, it's told me, you know, if there are any associations, etc. And it, basically what, it, what it's figured out um, is that there is a product drive from gender. Okay? And I can actually come here and look at and see what that is. Um, and it, it tells me 
um, you know, basically the detail behind that. So I can see that gender does influence the products that are sold. And I can see the breakdown of those products um, by gender um, right here on the screen. So I can drill down and see any of this information as well. Um, I could then use this to then predict uh, based upon marketing strategy or pricing strategy, what have you, uh, to figure out how that's going to impact my sales over the year. Okay. So this is the Watson Analytics piece of, of planning analytics. And it is a very powerful tool to then incorporate in with your existing forecasting, budgeting, uh, dashboarding, and analysis that you're doing. This comes free with the planning analytics platform. Okay. Uh, with that, we're going to jump over to our question and answer section. Um, if you guys have any questions, please enter them into the chat window. Um, if we don't have time to get to your question, we will be following up um, in an email with answers to those questions. Please don't be shy. Um, ask anything that, that comes to mind, um, uh, either about LPA, about um, IBM products, or planning analytics in particular. I'll uh, be happy to answer any questions that you have. I'll please go ahead and enter them into the chat window now and we'll... Okay, so on to our first question. Um, first question we have is, how is planning analytics licensed? Um, planning analytics is licensed a little bit different than some of the other products. Um, this first version of it um, is of course a cloud-based uh, version. Um, it is user-based, um, so it's per user per month, um, and with that license comes both the hardware provision um, as well as all the maintenance like we mentioned before, um, as well as the software. Um, so uh, you get the support um, with that. Um, included in that is uh, everything that you saw today, um, which is behind the covers, the TM1 uh, BI against TM1 as well as Watson, um, all the dashboarding, as well as the mobile capabilities that we didn't see today. Okay, uh, second question. Um, I'm currently on TM1 10.2.2 on premise. Uh, how difficult is it to upgrade to planning analytics? Uh, very easy, very good question. Um, it's extremely easy to, to migrate. Um, all of your existing content your cubes, um, you know, your, your subsets, all your ETLs that you created, all the data uh, will migrate uh, up to planning analytics very seamlessly. Behind the scenes, um, all those cubes will still exist, all those um, cube views, etc. Um, basically, the, the steps that you need to take is set up the users, um, the, the passwords, the security on planning analytics as well as set up the ODBC connection from Planning Analytics back to um, your data sources um, using the integration tools that come with Planning Analytics. And one final note is on the, uh, the reports. Uh, Planning Analytics does not use perspectives. Um, it is migrated to CAFE. So any perspectives reports that you have would need to be converted to CAFE. Uh, most of them can simply be opened in CAFE and converted automatically and saved as a CAFE report. Um, but uh, that would really be the only migration that you'd really have to be concerned with um, with doing this upgrade. Um, third question, how many different predictions or versions um, am I limited to within the model? Very good question. Um, you're not. Uh, I could have as many different predictors, uh, predictions, versions of the data as I want to. Um, you're only li really limited by the amount of data that you've got on the server itself. You've got 64 gigs of RAM to work with. That is a huge model. Um, so you could have several thousand versions of the data, uh, several thousand different predictions most likely. Um, within your data set before you ever reach that 64 gig threshold. So there's no there's no model constrict um, in that, you know, that you can have a certain number of those. It's just however much memory you've got to work with on the server. 
next question. Uh, the layout of the tabs does not follow how I manage my business. Can this be changed? Definitely. Um, the one thing about planning analytics and you know, TM1 and, and BI and all these tools is it's a platform. Um, it, it's not an out of the box, you know, you have to use something that way. Um, it's, it's a platform. So I can customize those tabs, um, those charts, those graphs um, with my data. Um, I can format them in any way I want to. I can create any Excel spreadsheets behind the scenes that are powered by those cubes. Um, and of course, you know, those are my spreadsheets. Um, so it, it's an environment, it's a platform to do with it what you want to. Uh, basically anything that you d use Excel for now, uh, you could bring into the model very easily and customize the experience. No two environments ever look the same uh, amongst clients. And uh, also with planning analytics as well as the other tool sets, there's some blueprints that IBM will provide for free, which gets you started on certain business processes in certain industries. Um, and so it'll give you a starting point uh, to, to create your model um, and, and basically bring data in and, and give you different uh, flavors of ways that you can use the system. All right, uh, probably have time for one more question. Um, I'll pick this one. You mentioned Cognos BI in the beginning of the presentation. Um, but did not address it during the presentation. What is included in predicting, predictive, sorry, planning analytics? Um, good question. So what is uh, included in the, the price of, of planning analytics is uh, the basic TM1 functionality. So everything that you saw today um, on the, the TM1 side, so full TM1 functionality. It also includes Cognos Business Intelligence against TM1 cubes. That's the caveat. So it's a, it's a full Cognos BI license, but the data source is TM1 cubes. Um, there's an additional add-on license that you can add for, for uh, a particular number of users against non-TM1 sources. That's an extra fee. Um, but, but what's included in the base cost is Cognos Business Intelligence against TM1 cubes. It also includes the Watson Analytics uh, suite as well uh, within that cost. Um, and that's what's included in your, your monthly subscription, as well as the environment itself and all the maintenance and, and all that. So um, that's all the questions, time that we've got questions for questions uh, today. Um, but please, um, if I did not get to your question, um, I will email you with your answer. Uh, uh, in the next day or so. If you have any further questions that you think after we close the webinar, um, you feel free to email me at brendan.austin at lpa.com or you can shoot me um, uh, a text um, or send me an email, either one, and then we'll get back to you. Um, also, please uh, visit our website at www.lpa.com. Uh, out there we have our webinar schedule for our next topics in our webinar series. Um, and if you've got, please, you've got any questions, you need LPA to help you with anything, please reach out and we'd be willing to help and uh, talk with you ASAP. I uh, appreciate the time today and thank you very much.